Preparing a teaching dossier can have a transformative impact on your teaching beliefs and practices. During this video, I will share what a teaching dossier is, what is included in a typical teaching dossier, how we provide evidence of our teaching practice and impact on student learning, why you would even create a dossier, and what makes one stand out from the rest. There are a variety of reasons that instructors prepare a teaching dossier. More and more applications for tenure-track faculty positions, especially those that have a strong teaching focus, require a teaching dossier as part of the application requirements. Well-presented teaching dossier does set candidates apart. Advancing through the faculty ranks. Most institutions require a teaching dossier as part of the tenure and renewal package as a form of evidence for your contributions to teaching. Teaching dossiers allow us to accurately capture the breadth and depth of teaching and learning practices. They also provide an important form of evidence if you are ever going to go forward for teaching awards and honours. But perhaps most importantly, teaching dossiers allow us to reflect on our teaching and expertise and to reflect on why we're doing what we're doing in our teaching and learning practices. A dossier is a thoughtfully chosen, curated collection of evidence that documents the scope and quality of your teaching practice. As we've discussed, evidencing the impact of one's teaching practice and its impact on student learning is inherently complex. The dossier format allows us to capture the richness of our practices as instructors. Take about 10 seconds to think of some of the ways that we informally or formally show evidence of our teaching impact on student learning. My guess is that things like course evaluations or student course experience surveys, as they're called at Brock, student comments, or having a peer observe our teaching may have popped to mind. But there are many other ways to provide evidence of the scope and quality of our teaching expertise, and these typically come from three different perspectives, ourselves, students, and our peers. Rest assured that you are the most important form of evidence. No one knows more about your teaching experiences or materials or can put the evidence you receive or collect into context. For example, summary of teaching experiences in terms of courses you have taught, fundamental beliefs, teaching materials, example assignments, and lesson plans that provide evidence of how you put your beliefs into action, summary of new course innovations and development that speak to your ability to innovate, overview of engagement and professional learning activities such as workshops, programs, conferences, courses related to teaching and learning, engagement in the scholarship of teaching and learning, or critical reflection such as your perceptions of engagement, impact, and success. Putting information and data into context. Students also provide a critical source of evidence of our teaching effectiveness and impact. Of course, for many courses, formal student evaluations, or student course experience surveys, as they're called at Brock, typically ask students' perceptions of your effectiveness as an instructor, your organization, or the quality of feedback and fairness of your assessments. Even open-ended student comments about your strengths and areas for improvement may be available at the end of the semester. In addition to formal end-of-term course evaluations, many instructors collect mid-semester evaluations such as a start, stop, and continue, or they use a one-minute paper technique after teaching a challenging course concept. These may ask, what was the most important thing you learned? What was the muddiest point? What further questions do you have? Letters of support from former students that discuss how your teaching has impacted their learning can also provide evidence of your teaching or informal, unsolicited emails that talk about the impact of specific teaching approaches, strategies, or assessments that have had on their learning and development can also be included. Some instructors may also include examples of student work and assignments that provide exemplary examples of how your teaching approaches, feedback, or assessment strategies have helped them demonstrate the intended learning in the course. Your peers often provide an overlooked but important piece of feedback. For example, you may invite your colleagues into your classroom to provide feedback on a specific aspect of your teaching, or participate in teaching squares, where you and three of your colleagues visit each other's classrooms for the sole purpose of reflecting on and improving your own teaching. Another form of evidence from peers is having your peers peer review and provide feedback on your teaching materials, such as course outlines or assignments, and demonstrating how you have improved or changed these materials based on this feedback. You can also solicit letters from colleagues to discuss how you have impacted their teaching approaches and development, or that have provided more informal feedback about what they have learned from you as an instructor. So what exactly does the dossier look like? I think it's helpful to start with what they are not. 
The biggest mistake that we see some people make, whether this is part of job applications or renewal packages, is in to include disparate pieces of information, such as assignments, course outlines, course slides, randomly in a binder or folder, hoping that the reader will be able to make sense of this documentation and determine the scope and quality of an instructor's teaching and learning expertise. The best teaching dossiers are presented as narrative reports that carefully contextualize data and information that are presented within. The best dossiers are grounded in a teaching philosophy statement which provides a concise summary of your teaching beliefs, why you hold these beliefs, and how you put these beliefs into practice. Dossiers are always written in the first person. There is no one right format. I encourage you to reach out to colleagues and do some internet research to see some examples and think about what most resonates with you. There are two other things that are core qualities of the best dossiers. They demonstrate a sense of humility and a learning mindset, recognizing that teaching expertise is developed continuously. Over time, the best teaching dossiers present one's strengths, accomplishments, areas for growth and improvement, and future goals. They are organized and integrated. A clear table of contents, subheadings, and a clear narrative flow from section to section can help the reader get a clear picture of the scope and impact of your practice and clearly see how they relate back to your fundamental beliefs about teaching and learning. Finally, it's important to realize that there are many facets of teaching expertise. Teaching expertise is also demonstrated through our engagement and commitment to professional learning and development, our ability to mentor others, whether that be students, postdoctoral scholars, or our peers, our ability to apply and engage in inquiry and research related to our teaching, our educational leadership practices, whether that be engaging or enabling other teaching colleagues, actively participating in or leading communities, action groups, or specific initiatives related to teaching and learning. A typical table of contents will include various sections, including, but not limited to, a teaching philosophy, a summary of your teaching responsibilities, example teaching practices and supporting materials, student feedback, peer feedback, your engagement in professional learning and development, educational service and leadership, awards and recognition, goals, and an appendix. If you're just starting out, don't worry. Most people starting out might start with two or three sections, such as the teaching philosophy, teaching responsibility, teaching practices, and supporting materials and future goals. I encourage you to think about which of these sections best apply to you and start there. Next to preparing a teaching philosophy, creating a table of contents is always the first step we recommend to those just starting the process. Regardless of where you start, think about listing what you have done in each of these sections, describing what you have done and its impact to others. Remember that you are the only one that can contextualize your practice for others. Finally, reflecting upon what you have done in terms of how it relates back to your beliefs, how it demonstrates your strengths and future areas for growth, what you have learned through these experiences, and your future goals. People often struggle most with critically reflecting on their experiences, but I can tell you that this reflective narrative is exactly what clearly differentiates the best teaching dossiers. What does this look like in practice? In each section, include a final summary paragraph for all information, data, and evidence presented that answers the following questions. What have you learned? How did these connect back to your philosophy and practices? And what did they say about your strengths and future areas for growth? How you continue to grow and develop your educational practice based on these data. What actions will you take to grow and improve? Keep in mind that also the best dossiers are organized to ensure two types of alignment. Number one, horizontal alignment, where clear links are made between your beliefs, teaching strategies, and the evidence presented. And number two, vertical alignment, where evidence and data related to your teaching beliefs and accomplishments that are presented from multiple sources of data and points of view, including yourself, students, and your peers. To help us wrap up our conversation, the best dossiers are grounded in a philosophy which provides an overview of your key beliefs related to teaching and learning. And then they present a carefully curated selection of documentation which provides evidence of these beliefs, strengths, and contributions that are integrated throughout the dossier. The dossier should make explicit how this evidence aligns back to their teaching beliefs and philosophy. Strong dossiers will provide evidence from multiple perspectives, whether that, that be yourself, colleagues and students, and data sources, in order to clearly demonstrate both the scope and impact of your practice. The absolute best dossiers capture the authentic voice of the nominee and are grounded in a strong, reflective narrative that provides the reader with a clear understanding of the author's beliefs, approaches, contributions, expertise, and strengths. 
This narrative should guide the reader towards an understanding of why the author does what they do to support teaching and learning, the contextual factors that have influenced their teaching approaches and development, and how they continue to grow and improve into the future.